Where is it? Oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Same procedure. And at the moment, I'm catching really well on my longer line. When I was six year old, little and often were the best way of feeding. I'm 66 and it's still the best way of feeding. Just put 15 little poker micros in, like that, and it's going to fall through the peg and draw fish the whole time. Now, what's that? Tom Scully. He got to meet me in a secret location. What? Oh, Tom, what are you playing at here, you stupid man? You're going to meet me in a secret location and take me to a... Blindfold me? That's not happened to me for a long, long time. No, <sighs> right, right, right. I've got to tell you, you I, are... My kids will pay ransom, Tom. Just, you just tell them how much you want, mate. So? That's good enough for me. OK, you can get out now. Ah, uh, where? Where am I? Ooh. Right, well the first thing you do when you go to a new venue is pick your phone up and press Google and go on and write the name of the thing in and that gives you all the information, where it is, the location, how many lakes and everything like that. That's the first thing that I do. I go to Mr Google and I find out as much information as I can get. And the second thing you do, hey, you have a great big lovely fisherman's breakfast. How good is that? Barlow Country Club, it's not just a fishing thing, Barlow Country Club. Big Al's Tattle Shack. Hmm. What's that all about? Ah, you must be Big Al. Oh, yes. Pleased to meet you, my old Pleased pal. Pleased to meet you. Are you all right? Tommy Pickering. And, yeah. What, uh, what brings you around these parts? Well, I've come to fish your fishery, oh. and, uh, and I need a little bit of information. I've got a little bit off Google and everything like that. What a lovely surprise. Uh, uh, the Narnia Pond was called Tench Pond. Ah. So it used to be full of tench and right. when we took the fishery over about a year and a half ago I, f I fished myself and fished it and I've caught about 60 fish in a day and uh, I didn't even catch tench. So I said to the owner, ah. so like, when we rename the ponds we, we can't really call it tench, tench pond, pond because we were catching roach and rud and crusions and fantails. So, oh, so I can expect everything. A bit of everything. There's even some bonus golden tench in there as well. A, a golden tench. tench. Now tench. that sounds exciting. Yeah, it's probably about four foot deep, four and a half foot deep. It's quite shallow. But it's, um, it fishes its head off on its day and right. there's a few surprises in there, hence why it's called Narnia. So, let's have a look at the peg. What I'm looking for is, first of all, the wind. The wind direction is coming from that direction. So I don't really want to fish here with the winds blowing at me because it's going to, we're going to get some rain as well. So I'm looking for a little bit more shelter. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get on this side so I'll be a little bit more sheltered. I'm just going to pick a peg with probably a little bit of cover and the peg I chose is I've chose peg four on Narnia so why have I picked this peg well the simple reason is it just looks fishy you can see the reeds and they go out four meters and, and it makes a point and I think every tension crucial in the lake will be somewhere in that area on that point of them reeds when I plumb up I find the depth and I'm going to feed that but to start with I'm going to fish in the open water because I don't know, I've never fished it before, just to find out what's going to happen, I think that's a great little spot and that's why I chose this peg. Well finally, I can take this off after being hijacked. I can take that off and I can get some fishing done. So that's my target. I'm going to try and catch a golden tench. Let's go. Whenever you go fishing, you always plumb the depth because if somebody tells you it's four foot, it might be four foot one or four foot two. It's only an estimate. So the first thing, I just want a rough idea of what it's like at the side of that reeds there where I've been, where I'm expecting to catch them later on. And it's about two and a half to three foot deep, which is all right. Then I'm going to ship out and I'm going to see if it's on a slope, which it is, which is nice because I like the insides to be on slopes. Then. What I'm looking for now, I'm looking for a nice flat bottom that I'm going to fish. So I'm shipping it out until I get to what I think is a flat bottom. Now that's about eight metres, that eight, nine metres. And all I'm going to do then, I'm lining it up with a tree and I've got, so the bottom of the 
body is on the surface and I've got like two inches over and then what I do I go to each side and I make sure that it's flat and I'm just looking for ledges and any holes in the in the bottom or anything it's like in fact if anything it's like a snooker table it's as flat as anything just there and that's beautiful I know the pellets will fall down they'll all lay on the bottom they won't roll off the leg that's perfect so all I'm going to do then I'm going to come in a little bit at a time and just to see if I'm on a slope. I've come in about three foot and now it's starting to slope towards me which, which is what I like and is nice. I've got the two rigs made up so I can fish out there, catch some fish, then when I think they're coming into the edge I can pick the rig up that's already made for the edge. So I've got two rigs because of different depths. Get in your mind what the bottom's like so you know where you're fishing, you know the holes and the crannies and the ledges and everything like that. And that's what you're trying to do because you want your bait on the bottom. start with, I'm not going to start on inside, I'm going to build that up. I'm just going to keep throwing a few microfocus there. And I'm going to try and catch my fish on that bit of flat area about 8 metres. And all I've done, I've put a, a 6 mil Fulca yellow on. Start on yellow on a, on a normal commercial. And I'm going to half fill my pot with micros. What well, you've got to remember, when you ship out, I've got a little pot on. I don't want to use a catapult or a pot to start with. I'm going to start on pot because I want to congregate the fish on a, a tube of bait going down where the fish come in and intercept it. Take my time because the bait's not wet, it's dry, so I don't want them to bounce out, so I'm just going to take my time. And when I get to my spot that I'm going to fish, elbow and end up pulled for the marker out, line it up with that tree, two or three inches off water, turn it over, tap it to make sure they all come out. Ten second rule, so at the bottom it floats, touching the water, 10 seconds so, it gives the bait a chance to go to the bottom and then my rig will be straight and hopefully I'll drop my bait in with the, the loose offerings that have just gone in. Now first cast is always interesting because you're trying to build a peg up, you might not catch early but you're trying to build that peg up and because it's a mixed fishery where I'm expecting to catch roach, tench, fantails, chub, barbel, there's all kinds of fish in here, rud, I've just lifted it up then and just lowered it, lowered it back in because I had a couple of indications. So there's a few fish milling about. I was told there were a lot of roach in so I've not put a micro on the hook yet. That might be the... Oh, that were a little deal. Well, I even struck at that. That were a bite, that. But because I didn't strike, I lifted because uh, I've, got a sh I've got a short line to the float so that means I can lift. I can fish again straight away. I'm not striking the bait off. I'm just lifting. And then I, if I miss it, I can lower it straight to the fish again, which is, is typical of, of, of pellet style fishing. And that's the beauty about the Fulca bait. You don't strike it off. You don't strike it off. Whereas if you had a soft hook pellet on, you will be striking it off and have to come back and start again and do it all again. With the Fulca, you don't have to do all that because it's easy to hook and it don't come off. I'm getting indications anyway. That's a good sign. There we go. Now then, what's this first fish of the day? What we got? Well, I missed a couple of dinks. I had a couple of dinks, and then obviously they're not not used to it yet because it's first cast. But we've got one first cast anyway. I don't know what it, oh, it looks like. Oh, it's a roach. Oh, look at that! For a, wow, look at that. Yellow focused. There, look. Look at that, a roach. That's that's six ounce that. So, uh, first fish of the day, six ounce roach. You won't get fed up of catching them all day, trust me. <laughs> right, rig I've chose today and the setup. I've got a size 16 hook to 012 because I knew it were a mixed fishery. Six inch hook length, loop to loop. Reason for loop to loop, it's it's most practical not you can use, so I can change the hook if I want to show, especially on a new venue where I might have to change a few hooks to find out which is the best one. Above that, a number 10 dot, six inches above it, another number 10. And there's my two droppers, so the line rig drops through. Six inch above the top dropper is the rest of the shot that cocks the flow, which is the bulk. And all that is in three areas. So I've got two telltale shot and a bulk. Simple as that, that's all you've got to do. Keep it as simple as that. 
Then the float from the depth rig where I'm fishing at four and a half foot deep, it's 0.4. And in the edge, it's a 0.3, because it's a little bit shallower, it's a foot shallower, so it's a 0.3. I like fiberglass stems, and the bristle is a nice bristle, so it's going to sit there and you can see it. Don't begin a really fine, especially pellet fishing, a really fine one that you're struggling to shot and struggling to see. And when this type of fishing is really important, is that length of line. You want between six inches and a foot. For the simple reason, you lift and you're not striking. If it's too long and you're striking, you strike your hook bait off, you've got to come back and keep going back out. And I've got a little pot on the end. My rig's as simple as that. My elastic is a yellow zip elastic, straightforward for all kinds of fishing. I didn't know what fish I was going to catch, and that gives me a chance to catch playing a, uh, a carp, small carp, a tench, a bream, but it also gives me a chance of getting them roach out. So that's a nice all-round elastic. And that's my setup. So same routine, same spot, elbow end at pole, feed, 10 second rule, and all I'm trying to do all the time is just keep feeding that tube, that same line, I call it like in a tube, so you, all, the, all the time through the peg, and I think the fish get used to it, there you go, look at that, they'll come straight to it, and I've got one instantly. As soon as I lowered my, my hook bait into that tube of bait, it took it straight away. Wow, look at that. What a roach. Look at that. That's a pound, that. <laughs> look at that. That's immaculate. There's not a scale out of place. The colours are perfect. That's nearly a pound, that. That's beautiful. Oh. Oh, look at that, eh? Wow, how beautiful are they? Yeah. They're fantastic. You know, you could catch them all day. That's absolutely stunning, that. What a place. At the moment, I'm catching really well on my longer line. I'm catching a mixture of fish. While fish are feeding, you don't have to think about it. Never come off feeding fish. But, there's a reason why you feed your other lines. And the secret is, the moment you stop catching, you can have a change. But what you do, you keep feeding the line you've been feeding, because you might not catch when you change to the other line. Now, one of the things I've always been taught as a youngster is little and often is the best way of feeding. It was the best way of feeding when I was six year old, and now I'm 66, it's the best way of feeding, little and often. But if you're catching, why do you want to come off it and risk it? I'm catching on my eight metre line, so I'm going to keep feeding that. But what happens is, because my other line is the side of that reed there, when I get the rig in, a fish like this, this is the time to feed. It just, just throws a bit of bait in, so you're prepping it up. Now then, because it's quite close, the longer you leave that, the better it will be at the end. And the moment that goes off, that gives you an opportunity of coming into the inside line to try that. But just keep feeding out there because you might have to go back to it. And that's how you're doing. One of the questions I get asked a lot, when do I, when do I move? When do I go you know, on the inside? The fish will tell you. What I think is when you go on a new line, you should get an indication or a bite straight away. If you don't get one in five minutes, you probably won't get one and you've got to go back to the other line. That's why you keep feeding it. So, I've got my rig for inside now, which is only, it's a bit shallower, about three foot deep. I'm going to put some, even though I've been throwing them in, I'm now going to switch to a pot. So, and I really fancy this because it's right, it's, corner of them reeds. So I'm going to feed, you get five minutes, one cast almost. And if, if you get a bite, you can usually stop on this line, rest at match, because it tells you that the fish have come in short. 
Now I've gone in and I've not had, a, I've not had an indication. I've not had a, that there's a fish there. Oh, that were a little dink then, just a tiny one. And I've been feeding it from stuff off, and it's been nearly three hours now, so it, you know, I'd expect a few fish to be there. Now I've not had one. I've had one little dink on that, which could be anything. And uh, uh, straight away now I'm thinking mm, they haven't moved in yet. That's my my thought. And I've, I've had that one little dink. That's all. Oh, that were another little dink. And they're just perhaps not ready to come in. The fish tell you. They tell you when they. Hey, oh, that's a, that's a bite. Oh, there you go. I must admit I was really close to the five minute mark then. And this is. Mr. Angry, this it wants to get in them reeds. I don't know why. Oh, it's angry, this one. It don't like me. Oh, it's a tench. <laughs> get in, do you? Tinker, tinker. Right. Tinker, tinker. <laughs> We've gone down there. I was right on the border of the five minutes, but I've got one. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to feed out there on my longer line again, and then I'm going back down there because I've caught one. And I want to catch them on that line because I know once they come in there, I'll get a bigger weight and I'll catch them rest of the day that I'm fishing. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at that. Yellow Fouca, get in there, whoa. Oh, wow. Well, that was good. Now, what I've done, because I've been fishing here for quite a while now, I've had to change the way I'm fishing because I'm getting, getting the hang of it a bit better. And I will put in micros, micro focus through. But I'm getting that many roach. I want to try and get the fantails and the bigger fish. And what I've done, I've, I've stopped putting micros in and I've started putting the, the normal size six mils in. So I'm just tucking a, a yellow one, six mil, and I'm putting six of the normal sizing, mixed colours, because I'm after the bigger fish. I know, I know, <laughs> sometimes it's a strange one, but I'm getting pestered with six, eight ounce roach, and I want to really catch these fantails and the tench, that, the bigger fish that are underneath. So I've cut them out and started just putting the six mil normal ones in, and it's been miles better. I'm waiting longer for bites, but when I get one, it's a bigger fish. And that last fish, even though it were a, it were a, a roach, it were nearly a pound, it were a bigger fish. Six or seven different types of fish I've caught. I don't, when float goes under, I don't know what the next one's gonna be. I'm not sure what it is. If I were a guessing man, it's fighting a bit like a tench, to be honest with you, but I'm not sure what it is. But it's fighting like a tench, I hope, it is. I hope it's golden. Can't make me mind what it is. Fighting really strange. It's a, it must be a tench, it's trying to get it reeds now. Where is it? Where is it? Oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Bag of Fouca, get in! <laughs> look at that! <laughs> Golden tench, look at that! Oh, we can go home now. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Eh? Yellow Fouca. You can't beat it. Woohoo! Ah, where's that big alpha in bag of Fouca? Brilliant. To sum the day up, first of all, the fishery is absolutely stunning, fantastic. Facilities are awesome. The fishing is unbelievable. I just can't believe how many different species I've caught, probably seven or eight different species. When the float went under I didn't know what I was going to catch. But if I came again would I change the way that I'm fishing, would I change the tactics and I would a little bit I think to start with because I didn't know the venue. I fished two lines, one in the edge that weren't, weren't brilliant, I caught a few fish but it, it weren't fantastic but the best line were in front of me at eight meters and I put the micro fulker in and I kept pruning them in and I was catching these ropes. And the trouble is, these ropes were six to eight ounces, so they were good fish, so I was happy catching them. 
If they'd have been smaller fish, I'd have probably clicked a bit quicker because when I knock the micros off and just start a pretty normal size focus, six mils in, I started catching better fish. When they caught the fish, I caught these fantails, an odd big roach, tench, and I was catching them better. So if I think if I came again, I would do it the other way around. I'd just feed the six mils, catch the bigger fish, and then if they went off, then I'd introduce micros and I'd, I'd do it the opposite way around. But I can't grumble, I've had a bite every casting. It's been a proper mixed bag. I've absolutely, thoroughly enjoyed it.